what is uh, how burning is? How does he look? He's feeling fine. It's no temperature. Uh, I haven't uh, gotten that yet from the medical staff. And uh, when I do, uh, we'll make a decision. That's possible. Everything's possible. These guys are all twittering there. What are you doing? So, <laughs> tweeting? Tweeting? <laughs> Establishing a four check against a team given a puck moving defenseman, Randy, how much of a challenge will that be for your team tonight? Well, again, uh, you know, we're playing a team that is, uh, forces you to earn your space on the ice. And the key for us and for us to be effective is, is we've got to execute through the transitioning the puck from our zone through the neutral ice to get a four check going. And they've got a system that they play to try to impede your progress through the neutral ice. And I don't think uh, it's any secret that they're a hard trapping team. And they like to play in your face and make you earn your space. Is that, does that make you jealous sometimes? Uh, jealous is a bad word. Envious is another bad word. I think you get uh, you, what, you, what you've earned and you have a hockey club that has some strengths. And when, again, when you look at teams that are 100 point teams, you look at them and say, they're doing some things that we think we could do and we should do. And they're doing to a higher level than we are. James had a range that he's been putting some pressure on himself and speaking with us just because he hasn't scored enough lately. Have you seen anything different from him, or do you think it's just kind of the roll of the dice? Uh, I, again, I think with JVR, it's about moving his feet, getting to the tough area. Uh, since uh, he's come on board with our hockey club, uh, we made a statement, and he's made a statement that he has to earn his space in front of the net. That's one a starting point for him. If he shies away from that area, uh, I think he cuts down his opportunities by 10 to 20 percent by not being there. He's got good hands in tight for a big man. He can take the puck from the back of the net to the front of the net effectively and create chances. So I think that would be the first place that I would start if I was him. And he's, but he's been told that if he doesn't want to stay in front of the net, well, we'll find somebody else to put him in, put somebody else there. You ended up playing 26 minutes the other night. I guess that's just the way the game goes. Or? Well, when, when you're down and uh, you, you think that uh, that line was going, they, you know, in the two games, I think we had Phil Kessel for 23 scoring chances in the two games. So it's not like we weren't creating scoring chances or didn't get chances. We, we didn't score enough. Ryan Miller's a guy who's had a lot of success against the Leafs in the past. Now he's with St. Louis. Feel almost a little unfair to put him behind a team that plays defense the way they do. Ryan Miller's a quality goalie. I don't know if he's going to play. I don't know if he's going to play. I got uh, the scribe from uh, St. Louis is going to let us know. Darren Pang, that he's, is he playing? I don't know. They, they don't know. I don't talk goalie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, all I, I could say is the other guy had a shutout in Pittsburgh. One nothing. They had a day off in between. So who do you think is going to play? Miller. Okay. And Miller's going to play. <laughs> that's his opinion, so that's good. They don't have a goalie controversy there, it seems. <laughs> What's the mood of the team like right now? They seem kind of relaxed in practice. Hey, again, it's about tonight. And if you come into today uh, with doom and gloom and tense, and nervous and all those things to an extreme, then you're not going to be able to perform. They should be nervous in, a, in the day of a game, but they should be loose too, feel good about themselves and get ready to perform. That's our motto is you can't change what happened yesterday. We don't like what happened yesterday. Even if it, it was successful, you can't get too high and you can't get too low. Get on an even keel, stay on that even keel, prepare yourself as a professional, you have the same routine every every day, day in, day out, so that when things don't go as well as you'd like, you go back to that. And when you're, they're going well, you stay with it to keep you grounded. How much There's two more guys. How much, sorry, how much discipline does it take from a coaching staff or within your room to adhere to that one? Oh, it's difficult because emotions get to you. You're a human. There's no way that you, you don't feel better when you win. <laughs> 
I don't know if there's a person in the world that doesn't, and I don't know if there's a person that doesn't feel bad when, when you don't have the success that you expect. Everybody feels it. Brandon, you know, a lot of coaches, the coaching, coaching fraternity is very supportive of each other. Often you'll, you'll hear about coaches reaching out to buddies in the fraternity just to throw stuff off the wall at them. Have you done that lately? Or well, I try to steal as much as I can. I think that's what you you should do, and I think that that's how you grow as a coach, and you, and you grow in this business. That I'm sure that there's things that it, that I would have done in in five six years ago that I would never ever think of doing again, and that's because you you had the experience of it, and you reacted poorly, or you didn't get the necessary result, and it really wasn't as bad as you thought it was. But on the other hand, there you have to be creative, and you have to find ways to to motivate and stimulate your people. And that's important. Today's young youth is different. They're different people than what we grew up with.